Now, ladies and gentlemen, hey, 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 welcome to the Pal Pal Show. That's right, this is the Queen of Bling, Orlando's Oprah, the Hope Doctor, the P Factor. And boy, I tell you, I am excited today because we have an awesome guest. That's right, so call your neighbors, call your friends, and tell them to tune in because a Pam Pow show is on again. That's right, took a little sabbatical for a couple of weeks after I celebrated my beloved, that's right, uh, hubby uh, anniversary. I know he's resting in peace, but today we're going to talk about a hot topic. And I know with COVID-19, it's got even bigger, and that's social media dating. But I tell you, I got a beautiful couple that met up, you know, hooked up, and it all really happened because of social media. And that's none other than George Jones and Valerie Dale Jones, great friends of mine. I tell you, I'm excited. Hey, guys, you know everybody's looking for a 50-50 love, and you can hear Ted Pendergrass in the background talking about that 50-50 love. So welcome to the Pam Paul Show. How y'all doing? We're doing awesome. All right. Great. Awesome. Doing man. great, Pam. Yeah. All right, well, we're glad to have you guys on the show. Uh, let everybody know how we met you, Val. Well, we met, oh, it's been over 30 years ago, met you and Leroy through our business, uh, and uh, we were business partners. And I've looked at you as, you all just a super phenomenal couple. You saw one, you saw the other, and you all were one as a team. That's the way I've always known you. Well, I tell you, it's just great knowing you guys, and I'm just excited. You guys will be celebrating on tomorrow your one-year anniversary, but we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty talking about this social media dating, and especially with COVID-19, I hear that it's getting, uh, you know, even, even more popular. So, you know, uh, why are people dating this way now? Uh, can you tell me, Val, I know you have been on social media, you were going to get off at one point, but why, why are people dating this way now? I feel like people are dating this way because, especially with COVID, because moving out, moving around people, you know, is not safe anymore. So this gives you an outlet and you would meet people you would not ordinarily meet, you know, to come across your path. So it gives you access to meet more people through social media. Right. But, uh, you know, George, when I when I look at this, I mean, this social media dating, you guys hooked up uh, even before social media, uh, uh, what I'm saying, the COVID-19. So tell me, and, you know, what are you looking at? Why is social media dating good? Well, for the reason that it's, it's plain to see, today you can see people online, kind of get a background on them before you even approach them to know whether or not from that information that they are a good match for you. The question is whether or not that's valid data that we're getting when we actually go on the social media. If it's true, it's a, it's a great feature. Right, now uh, I heard that there's some good, some bads, and some ugly of the social media dating. So Val, what do you feel are the good, the bad, and the uglies of social media dating? Well, the good is you can meet people, again, that you wouldn't ordinarily meet. The bad is you can't believe everything you see, and you have to take precaution because people can always give you an a, a image on, on social media, but then that's, that may not be the real thing. You have to really decipher and look and research and do background checks to make sure what you see is what you get. And you have to take like precaution. That. Right. Yeah. What you see is what you get. Now, you know, I've heard some ladies talk about the uglies of social media. I know that there are more women uh, than men that are on the sites. I've been looking at some of the social media dating sites. They got Zeus, I think they got 40 million. Uh, Elite Singles got 13 million. Uh, you know, they got Match, I'm told, for those that are wanting long-term relationships, 30 million. There's Black People Meet, sing, uh, Silver Singles, uh, I got a colleague of mine who is an officer in a bank. He met his beautiful wife on um, Plenty of Fish, but I heard some of the most dangerous ones are Tinder and OkCupid okay or whatever. So, George, what do you have to say about that? 
Uh, are there a lot of uh, what they call imposters on that social media dating? Absolutely, Pam. You know, uh, what's come about is this thing called speed dating. Okay. And speed dating process, you know, people are meeting each other uh, by the dozens and uh, eliminating them, you know, very quickly. The, the negative issue with that is, is they're not looking for committed long-term relationships. They're just using them as dating sites to date people. And that's one of the, the lack of commitment that we find in this generational. The older you are, probably the less likely that's your, your mythology. The younger you are, that's probably what you prefer to do. So what that, is this that, uh, what they call the serial dating kind of thing that's going on? Because I heard that a lot of people lie and make up things. They send old pictures. They tell yeah. me of how they looked 20 years ago. Uh, the serial data. So what is the serial data looking for, Val? They're not looking for commitment. We know that. They're looking for, in my opinion, someone they can have uh, a quick, you know, a quickie with and move on to the next person. I so got you. Not, so they're looking for that one night stand, even night as stand. dangerous as, as, as COVID-19 is. Yes. I mean, you know, uh, you know, the old saying in the old school days, uh, you know, find them and forget them, you know. Uh, but the bottom line is, I know people uh, are not able to go out to dinner and, you know, go out. A lot of people, you know, would go out dancing, meet each other. Some people even, you know, would meet acquaintances, uh, you know, in ministry and things of that nature. But it just seems to me that there's danger out there. George, what are some of the things that guys say about social media that should really turn people off? Yeah, well, what they're saying is that they can be uh, as anonymous as they choose to be because, you know, the name they give you may not be the real name. The information they give you may not ever be accurate. And there are even some incidences where guys have used pictures of other men to wow. attract women mm -hmm. and what? then hope to meet them and convince them that they should stay with them. So these are ideas that guys are using now to, basically to entrap a woman to be able to have a chance to meet a woman. Right, and just to meet the woman and just have a one night stand and it's all over. Now yes. Val, a lady was telling me uh, the other day as I inquired uh, you know, with uh, my audience if they wanted to be interviewed about this, she was telling me that she met a guy on social media, he said he wanted to have a serious relationship. She did a background check found that he'd been married eight times because she said in three days he was ready to marry her. And she looked at he had a criminal record, he had battery, he had abused women. So what do you tell women that's on those dating sites? What were you on the lookout for? Well, I was on the lookout for someone that I would feel that was equally yoked with me. And what I did first was I prayed before I got on. And my okay. prayer was, if, if the person is for me, bring them to me clearly. If not, remove them quickly. And so when you're older, you have to be upfront with people about what you're looking for, but you don't give up so much information, personal stuff right away. And you always got to take caution. They want you to meet them somewhere that's not in public or, you know, and you need to have somebody go with you, maybe sit on another table or something. You have to take caution because people are strange, <laughs> you know, today. And your first contact should not be one that you're going to dump all your baggage on from the past. Right. You know, so, so what I'm saying is when, when someone meets someone on social media uh, with the COVID-19 virus, do you think they should meet up with a mask on now or should they wait? I heard Dr. Fossey <laughs> speak on that and he said it's okay for people to date during this time, but even if they did, you think they should meet up with a mask? And if so, where would be the safest place for them to meet in a restaurant. I know you mentioned having somebody watch or whatever, yes. but that might be uncomfortable for some people. George, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think you should meet with a mask and a shield if they can. Because right. see, today, you know, before COVID, right. you know, we would say we need to take a blood test to make sure you don't have a communicable disease. Right. But now that could be just by your speech. You right. Know, so you have to protect yourself because you really don't know that person. Absolutely. So it's absolutely imperative that you meet with mass average protection, the, the shield, because if the person is considerate and understanding, they want to be protected also because they don't know you and you don't know them. So it's right. a mutual agreement 
to meet if they refuse and they say, Well, I gotta see all of you up front, well, pass. Next, right. Go to the next person. Right. And 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 Val, you as a female had been on social media dating, and we're gonna talk a moment about how you guys hooked up, and I tell you, you guys got a story. But what was some of the dangers and things that you saw as you were communicating with men on uh dating websites? Well, just like uh George has said previously. Some of them will show you one picture is not who you think it is. You got to go with your intuition. And so for me, when I was saying not to have someone so, so much at the table with me, but maybe I would have my daughter in the restaurant somewhere at another table, I wasn't going to go somewhere by myself to meet with someone. You got to have something, you know, to, to precaution for myself. And uh, it's just, you just have to take precaution, Pam. That's what so, I think. Uh, so are females just as bad as the men out there with the serial dating? George? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yes, yes, they are. There are gold diggers out there, uh, if we can use that terminology nowadays. But there's also women who just want a quickie. They just, they, they collect men. So, you oh, know, whether they're they looking or for not. sugar daddy, they just want some money. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, they want somebody they can dial for dollars when the time comes because they've had one date with the guy and they lead him on. So, you know, they just keep his number in their, uh, their computer and their <laughs> cell phone and say, look, hey, Joe, I need $500. Here's my situation. Wow. And they, it goes round and round. They may have six different people in there they can do that with. That's terrible. So tell me, uh, you guys got an incredible story. How did you guys hook up by way of the social media? Uh, Val, I think you said you were on a site or whatever, and I know you prayed that God will send you someone, but my God, tell me about that. Okay, so I prayed on July 4th for husband, July 5th, George calls me, but I was on a site for, um, you know, and I had been on there, but I wasn't active, and I just decided I was done, and I got off, was getting off the site, and in that moment, we, we intersected. He had a hat on that said Bison from Howard, and I have a daughter that worked at Howard, and I said, well, maybe he has a grand, a daughter, a granddaughter, she could help. That's truly what it was. And then he messaged, I messaged him, he messaged me, and that's how it started. Right, so, but but it all came about because of the social media. So, yes. so, so tell me, George, how did you, uh, you know, obviously you guys had love at first sight, that y'all finally had a physical date, and then uh, there was a surprise, but how long did you all talk with each other, and how did you talk, did you video chat? Or did you just uh, actually just talk by phone? Well, we, initially by phone. That was the initial uh, way I contacted her after I went on Google to really locate her. And then I said, you know, I want to, I'm looking for a wife. I let her know that right up front on the first call. And so we had business associations from over the years having just met professionally, but we had no interest in each other because we were both married to other people at the time. And so when I told her I was looking for a wife, it was a surprise to her. And of course, uh, at that point, she had to reconnect with who I was to make sure it was a safe to even continue the conversation. And then, of course, from that standpoint, we met and talked by phone and then by social media. We did uh, some Zoom calls together and talked. And that began from July. And we physically met the first time in August. So you mean in one month, Val, you guys uh, talked on the phone, chatted, and did some Zooms and all that, and then you had a physical meeting? Tell me about that. I heard that it was some hot stuff going on. i never forget it the rest of my life. Okay, my daughters had, uh, had set up a, a, a birthday brunch for me with some of my sister friends. My birthday's on the 27th of August, but this was the 25th. So uh, I was talking to my sister friends. I had my phone up. I said, this man I'm talking to, I said, I think it's going to be something real. I said, because I prayed about it. I feel real good. I got my answer. I'm looking at the picture, and he walks through the door <laughs> singing happy birthday with what? roses in his hand, a dozen roses, and a gift bag. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm like I saw a ghost. I, I couldn't believe it. So this is the first time we actually physically touched was at that event. That so week. you meant that he heard about your birthday party. You didn't even know he was coming? I didn't know he was coming. He talked to my daughters. He, he got in touch with them because the Howard connection did work. Our children met before we met because he had a grandchild going to Howard. Right, right. 
So he ended up showing up as a surprise to your birthday party. And, yes. and George, tell me what happened. Well, it was, it was an all girls birthday party, right? Okay. And so uh, we had, had queued it up, her daughter and myself, uh -huh. that I would be at the hotel because it was a private dining room and that I would show up and really they knew I was going to be bringing a ring. I said, I'm going to be bringing a ring. And so they were excited, her daughters were, and they knew she would be surprised. And so when I came in the door, singing happy birthday with the roses and the gift bag, she was speechless because she was introducing me on her phone to her sister friend sitting there. And it was 10 of them in the room. And while I came in the door singing, she didn't understand was this real? This is he's on the phone. My he's God, my physically God. Physically here. And I'm walking over to her and present her with the roses and the gift bag and her daughter says breathe mama breathe <laughs> and so she started to breathe and i said open your gift bag so she turned around to open the gift bag and i had the ring in my pocket i went down on one knee oh she my turned back around i had the ring and presented her and asked her would she marry me oh my god oh my, i mean you mean you got down on your knees yes with a ring on your yes. first date yes just going there as a surprise and asked would you marry me now what did you say to that i was in shock but i said yes because i'd already gotten confirmation from the creator so i don't want to say this that, online that don't, don't, Wow, that is like crazy. People that's like crazy. a Prince Charming and a Cinderella story. It was, it was. I mean, it was. it's like marriage at first sight, not just you know falling in love at first sight, but that's falling in love and marriage at first sight. Yes, yeah. Well, that is incredible. Now I know there are a lot of people out there. And, uh, you know, that talk about the fact, well, you know, before I hook up or marry or get a relationship with someone, uh, I got to be intimate is what they say, because, you know, I don't want to wake up the next morning and get divorced. And I just laugh at people that say that. But you guys <laughs> had no intimacy, none of that. And yet you guys made sure that each of you knew that you were in love. George, how did you know that this woman should be your wife. I mean, come on, tell me, what was it? Well, the thing that we agreed to do, and she had to agree to do it as well, no problem. Right. And we talked three times a day by phone before that initial meeting. Now, that was a month. So we agreed to call each other every day, three times a day. Okay. Early in the morning, we would rise and we'd have a spiritual connection together. We would pray on the phone. Okay. Call, on our morning call. Then okay. there would be a noonday call sometime throughout the day. And then we'd have a nighttime call that we'd probably be on the phone for a couple of hours every day, no matter what. So even the day that I came to propose to her, she thought I was still in another state because I kept calling the same morning we talked. We talked at noon and then her right, brunch right, was right. scheduled. So she never thought I was, I was even near her. Well I, well, I know Val talked about you and prayed about it and God gave you what you wanted, but do, I mean, what is it that you would have to feel or know that you could meet someone on the first date and you propose to her and then, of course, Val, you say yes. I mean, during that time that y'all communicated in a month, three times a day, what was it that came out of those conversations to make you new? or know that you would want to marry him well for me he he was the um he, we were equally yoked in our conversations we didn't play around we we, we talked deep conversations deep to understand what each other wanted we even to the point you know there was a piece that presented me a contract that meaning that things that he would say he would do things i would say i would do we were very thorough in that and then i right. got confirmation I had my questions, and he, I checked off every one, and he, he had answered every one. My goodness. So uh, it was just that you guys have a very incredible story because most uh, social media dating doesn't end that way. So as I get ready to close today, uh, I want to take a moment to get some wisdom from both of you. George, in 30 seconds, what would be the wisdom that you would share uh, with women 
who are dealing with guys on social media? Well, the first thing you want to determine is, is, is the man serious and looking for a long-term commitment? If that's her desire, if they are just looking for companionship, friendship, somebody to go on cruises with, that's different. I don't really have an opinion on that because I'm only able to talk about committed people and what All committed right. people need to look for. So and you need to look to see whether you got a player, player coming at you. That's correct. And you know, there are some women players, so I guess they could play together. That's right. But, uh, and, and Val, tell me your ages because I found out from you that it's never too late for love. So tell me about your ages. I'm 63 and George is 72. Eddie's fine. <laughs> I know that's right. Hey, you know what? A man with swag, he I, got I, some I, swag. I was looking at your pictures and your video, and uh, he's the kind of man that walks in the room and you got to take notice. You know, I, I just believe in swag. You got to add that hat. I got to tell you, George, you wearing that hat. I love a man that a hat, man. And you guys look so absolutely beautiful. So in 30 seconds, Val, give me what your closing comments would be to women who are out there doing. I know you guys got a great love story, but it doesn't always happen like that. But what would be your final words that you would share with others as, as women that's out there on social media? Well, I'll say this. This didn't come overnight. I waited a long time for someone to come that was the one for me. And I was not going to settle for less than what I knew I deserved. So in that, you know, I, I just, I can't help it. I, I'm a person that prays. and I ask God for what I wanted. So I would say pray first and then be very clear about what you want. And don't have unrealistic expectations of people. I think people overlook someone that can be very good, but they're looking for the flash. They're looking for the outward. I need to know your heart, your soul. I need to know who you are. So you've got to re be real clear what you're looking for and take precaution. Be right. careful. Don't, I, I asked, I told him, I said, look, handle my heart with care because I've been hurt. Handle it with care. I said, I'm going to extend it to you, but you must handle it with care. And if you don't, you will be cut off. Absolutely. That's awesome. You know, and there are things, I mean, there's all kind of investigations yeah. and things that people can do. Uh, I know my daughter was dating somebody once and I had a private detective. So I think that people, uh, you know, want to make sure that you check the person's background out. There's all kind of avenues out there to check the background, you know, find out whether you got any mutual friends or anything, uh, find out, you know, whether you can talk to them anytime, because if you can't talk to the person almost anytime, then that tell you they probably got a wife or someone or a husband uh, somewhere. You know I mean, you know, you just got to be able to really uh, find out whether that person is truly for you. You know, like I tell people, my husband passed away about a year and a half, and, uh, you know, I was on an interview with Mercy J the other week, and she says, well, are you ever going to date or marry again? I say, yeah, but I got five questions. And if they ask a no to any one of those questions I do to Oprah interview, then they already shut down off the telephone or whatever. I just to suggest, like you said, people should pray to God for what they want. And, uh, you know, God always makes our dreams a reality. I'm so excited yeah. for you. I send you kisses of love and roses. You know, and you. I just want to remind everybody that I got a book called How to Make a True Love Story That Never Ends. I wrote it uh, regarding me and my husband and our relationship. We were married 34 plus years had a beautiful marriage. We felt like we were dating the whole entire 34 years. Every week we had date night. We were romance. We loved each other. We held hands. So I talk about how to make that true love story that never ends. And I got a few guys that have, you know, called me and stuff like that. But they get offended by this book because they say, you know, you still in love with your husband. I say, well, I mean, he, he was my husband for 34 years, so how am I not going to be in love? I love my mom, I love my dad, and they're going to heaven, so I love him. But, you know, people, like you say, they got to learn to be able to accept romance in their life. And even though people have past hurts, like you said, they have to have understanding. So if you want a copy of this book, it will give you the keys to having a great romance and a great love story. Go to www.pampowerempowers.com and get a copy of this book. 
Also, if you're going through things like people are going through depression with COVID-19, got all kind of issues, you know, lost their job, all kind of, a lot of people don't even have relationships now. And they just feel really lonely. Well, I got a book called The Seven uh, Principles of Overcoming Any Obstacles, The P Factor. That's right. And it's an awesome book. You can go to my website again at www.pampowerempowers.com and get a copy of this book. Remember, I do life coaching. I coach by Zoom calls. I do entrepreneurial types. I'm an entrepreneur that earns six figures a year, develops six-figure earners. So I do understand entrepreneurship. Uh, from the aspect of building your own business. I life coach for ministry. I'm a minister, you know, uh, talk show host. I do all of the above. And my whole thing is being positive and helping other people to win. So I want to thank this awesome couple. We have all kind of interesting topics. We'll be back on again next week with another interesting guest. But I just want one final comment from each of you. I know you've given your wisdom, but we're getting ready to close the show. I want to thank you again for being with the cling of are uh, the queen of bling, complete yeah. factor, a whole doctor, and I'm just so happy for you that, hey, you guys uh, made that commitment, you in love, and you in love and business and partnership, that becomes an unstoppable force. Congratulations, yeah. my friend. Yeah. Any last yeah. word that we yeah. might have missed? We celebrate one year anniversary tomorrow because we got married on September 5th. We have a blended family. We have 10 children together, 31 grandchildren, and wow. great grandchildren. And we have a good time, and we're in love. All right, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. What's love got to do with it? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just keep those home fires burning. Keep being excited. I can look, you know, as that as the guy used to sing, it's written all over your face that you guys are in love with each other. So let's continue to keep each other in prayer. And yeah. I'm just so happy yeah. that social media worked out for you guys and those that are watching this show today if you're single or lonely you know uh you heard what they say you got some wisdom on that hey i i might need to get on a website hey, that's right, that's right. Right. <laughs> but anyway, my husband told me to enjoy my life so after yeah. COVID 19 is over with yeah. we're gonna see what god's gonna do so i, I love right. you guys thank you so you much yeah. and you know i gotta play this little bit of teddy that says everybody. Walk around in it. Fifty, fifty, love. When somebody loves you, that's right. That's it. You heard some loud cries. The beat factor, and we will see you again right here next week on the Pal Pal Show. Amen. God will allow the Joneses to the T O P, and that's where God wants all of us to be.